I don't want to invite you guys to follow along with this full body mobility routine that we're going to hit real quick. What's good everybody? Welcome, my name is Josh Setledge. I am the BJJ Strength Coach. I don't wanna invite you guys to follow along with this full body mobility routine that we're gonna hit real quick. All you're gonna need is a foam roller, any type of roller will do. You're gonna need a mobility ball, a lacrosse ball, a baseball, some sort of baseball sized dense sphere that you could use to dig into your muscles and stuff. And then you're gonna need some voodoo floss, or you could use your jujitsu belt, you could use a PVC pipe, really anything that you can hang on to pass behind and in front of your body. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first mobilization that we're going to do is gonna be the 90-90 adductor smash mobilization. I love this because it helps loosen up the adductors, which is like that groin muscle right in here. I do this before jujitsu, I do this before deadlifts, I do this before squats. This is one that I do almost every single day and it not only just helps my hips feel really good but it helps promote a lot of blood flow through the hips especially when it's cold outside and it's cold in the gym. Your hips are kind of getting cranky at you for squatting and deadlifting so much and, and especially just getting smash pass and everything. But doing this is not only going to help your range of motion and your hip mobility which helps with your guard game but it's also gonna help decrease your risk of injury when it comes to adductor and groin muscle pulls or muscle tears. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get into the same 90-90 hip drill that you guys are probably all pretty familiar with, but we're just gonna do it over a foam roller. So we're gonna be here, I get into my 90-90 position and I just set the foam roller under my back leg, kind of right where the adductor is. I think you guys should be able to see there and I'm kind of posting up on my arm on the opposite side. That way I can post and kind of let some of my weight fall on to the foam roller. I'm trying to keep a 90 degree angle in my knee, 90 degree angle in my ankle, the front leg doing the same, and we're gonna hang in this position for two minutes on each side. I'll get the timer started here. When it comes to working on these mobilizations, you wanna, this needs to be a daily practice. It doesn't need to be a super long ordeal. You don't need to spend an hour working on your mobility before every workout. You just need 10 to 20 minutes every single day. If you can just make it a manageable task or a manageable goal to hit 10 to 20 minutes every single day, it's gonna help you stay ahead of the curve a little bit or stay ahead of the ball, I should say. We want to make sure that mobility is something that we can maintain and progressively improve upon. It's just like lifting or it's just like a diet. You can't crash diet. You can't you can't eat a bunch of junk food and like completely go over your total caloric intake for the day and then just decide like, okay, today I'm gonna eat clean or today I'm gonna be in a caloric deficit and assume that that one day of eating in a caloric deficit is gonna get you shredded and keep you shredded for like the next two weeks. Same thing goes with training. You can't go to jujitsu or go to wrestling practice once and be, okay, I'm good for the next two weeks. It doesn't work that way. This needs to be a daily effort. It needs to be a daily habit. Something that you kind of factor into your normal everyday routine. That could be in your morning routine, something you do uh, right when you wake up in the morning. It could be something you do always before jujitsu or always before your workout as part of your warm up. Whatever you decide to do, it's up to you. Just make a goal to get in 10 to 20 minutes each and every single day. So we got 19 seconds left here. I'm kind of rolling and rocking back and forth, trying to get into a couple of different areas in the adductor. If you find a spot that like you get into a certain position with the foam roller and you don't aren't really feeling like it's helping at all, that's fine. Work around it and move into move into a spot that's gonna feel a little bit better for you. If you find something that's a little bit painful, like there's a lot of pressure there and it's sensitive, that may be the spot that you need to that you need to smash down on. We're gonna switch sides, move over to the second side, 
again, trying to keep it a nine degree angle in the knee, in this uh, back ankle here, posting up on our opposite hand, picking our hips up off the ground so that way we can kind of drop some weight onto the roller and onto our abductor. What's great about this one is that you can do like a typical adductor smash um, just by kind of like straddling a foam roller, which is great. That one works too. But this one, you get a little bit of a twofer because you get to be put in this front external hip rotation position, which is always great to work on as well. As you're working through this mobilization, you could do some contract relax. I've talked about contract relax a lot. It's a form of PNF stretching. Um, this is something that I originally picked up from Kelly Sturett back in the day. Kelly Sturett, um, I owe a lot of my mobility knowledge and my mobility, uh, I guess you could say like, I, like the way I've been able to live pain free for despite training so often and so hard, a lot of that is due to Kelly Sturett, so I owe that guy a lot. Um, but anyways, contract, the contract relax method basically is something you can do to kind of enhance the mobilization or enhance the stretch a little bit more so, so that you can get a little bit bigger of a bang for your buck. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. We've got 27 seconds left on the clock. We're going to take in a big deep breath, breathing into our stomach or even a little bit lower like we're trying to expand our waistband. So we'll take a big deep breath and hold it for five seconds. And we're gonna exhale and kind of just dig into it just a little bit more for 10 seconds. You can run through as many cycles of this as you'd like. Usually when I'm working through some mobilizations, if I'm uh, not quote unquote warmed up or I don't feel too loose or I wanna push it a little bit, I'll do this, I'll do the contract relax method in the last 30 seconds of that two minute repetition on either side. The next one we're going to do is we're gonna dig in to our rear delts. This is a great mobilization that you could use before squats, before uh, bench, before jujitsu, especially if you guys have been working on Kumoras and Americanas a lot. But essentially, you're gonna take your mobility ball, your lacrosse ball, whatever you're using, and you're just gonna put it right on the soft tissuey part of your shoulder. From right there, you're just gonna lay on it. We'll get a timer set for two minutes here. The timer set for two minutes, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine we're painting the ceiling. So if our fingers are a paintbrush, we paint down and we paint up, kind of like in a Karate Kid, right? Paint the fence. I don't know if you guys are uh, watching Cobra Kai right now, but that show is pretty dope. I just finished season three, let's see, maybe like a couple weeks ago. And uh, season four is going to be pretty wild now that the Miyagi-Do and uh, Eagle Fang. How funny is that? Eagle Fang as a karate dojo name. Eagles don't have fangs, for one. And it sounds cool, but like, unfortunately, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai just sounds way, way cooler, you know? But anyway, it's all good. So we're just working through kind of at this pace here. You don't want to go too fast like this when doing this mobilization that isn't that effective. Um, but we're really trying to lean in and press our shoulder against that ball. If you need some additional pressure, you could lift your hips up a little bit. Oh, there we go, yep. I feel that for sure. You can lift your hips up a bit. Oh, and really dig in there. Try to see if you can get to a point where you could get your fingers to touch behind you and get your fingers, oh man, get your fingers to touch in front of you. Whew. So this is a great example of, of one mobilization that I probably need to hit a little bit more often. My rear delts are so sensitive right now. Oh. You wanna try to keep your bicep and your tricep or, or this section of your arm in line with your shoulder. You don't wanna come down too far you don't want to come up too high. Try to keep it level. Oh boy, that was rough. All right, so we'll move on to the other side. We'll put it in the same spot. 
right behind that fleshy, meaty part of our shoulder, that tender spot. Bring our arm out so that it's parallel with our shoulder or in line with our shoulder. We'll set a timer for two minutes and we're just gonna paint the fence with our fingertips. Oh man, this side's worse than the other one. <laughs> Don't forget to breathe during these drills. A lot of times, uh, certain mobilizations are so, like your muscles are so tight and so sensitive that people kind of tense up, they go, oh, oh, oh. and you saw me do, even doing that a little bit on the last one. Um, but it's important to remember to not hold your breath the entire time. If you're doing some contract, relax drills, that's one thing, but to hold your breath and try to be tense the whole time, you want to relax as much as you can. And I get it, it's tough because these aren't always fun and these don't always feel great. But you gotta find a way to relax a little bit, try to breathe, try to allow your body to kind of like embrace the, the whatever tool we're using. In this case, it's a uh, mobility ball. You wanna make sure that you're kind of like letting your body melt over the, uh, the tool that you're using sucks because sometimes like we're so tight these things can be really uncomfortable but when it comes to uh preventing injury or decreasing our risk of injury i should say because no injury is fully 100 percent preventable unless you just stay in the house all day and don't do anything but when it comes to decreasing our risk of injury we gotta get uncomfortable sometimes and a lot of times people say like, oh gosh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I don't have 10 to 20 minutes a day to work on mobility. Well, okay, that may be true, but your priorities are probably all whacked out. If you're serious about being a competitive jiu-jitsu athlete, a competitive wrestler, or even not, you're just someone that loves jiu-jitsu and that loves wrestling and you just want to feel better and perform better on the mat and in the gym, and you don't have 10 to 20 minutes, you probably... You probably don't want to feel better that bad and so it's gonna take some time it's gonna be a little uncomfortable but that's okay we got one more this is gonna be for the upper body as well or excuse me we got two more I'm gonna use voodoo floss for this one you could use your jiu-jitsu belt you could use a um, PVC pipe but we're just gonna do some shoulder pass-throughs the way I do this is I fold this in half Depending on your belt size, you may have to fold your belt in half um, or you can just grab the ends. But basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it over our head, keeping our elbows locked out, flashing our armpits forward, and we're gonna bring it behind our body, touch the small of our back, and bring it forward. A lot of times I see people doing this, like right when they get here, they start to bend or they start to like really pull the band apart and kind of cheat it a little bit and then straighten the arms again. You want to make sure that you keep your elbows locked out the entire time, pulling your shoulder blades back, keeping your chest up nice and tall. We're going to work through 30 reps. You'll find that as you start to get warmed up a little bit, you may even be able to move your hands in a little bit more, which is totally fine if you're able to do that. I think that's 10. Oh, I do feel a little bit of a shoulder burn on this one. I'm, I lost count, I'm probably at 20. I'm terrible at counting, guys. I gotta have my training partners at the gym like let me know like, hey bro, was that four? Was it the start of four? Was it the end of four? Do I have one more left or am I, am I starting my last one? I get so confused sometimes. Anything over three reps, it's tough. It's struggle city for me. I think I got one more big one. Gotta keep my chest up. Oosh. Oh. That's gonna be it for the upper body. We got one more. 
I'm not sure what the uh, the official name is on this one. I know it's like a yoga pose or something. I don't do yoga, so I don't know the official like vinya vinyasa name for it. But I saw uh, my dog, Colin, my boy Colin Savage. Uh, he's a jiu-jitsu purple belt under Cassio Warneck. He was doing this stretch, and it's freaking awesome. It's a good stretch. It'll kind of open up the hips, improve your guard range of motion, uh, improve your hip external rotation. So what you're going to do is if you start sitting on your butt, you're going to tuck one foot in like this as far as you can. If this is as far as you can tuck it, that's totally fine. Try to tuck it in as far as you can. And then your next leg, you're going to bring up and across. You may need to assist yourself. I know I need to assist myself. And you're going to cross it over the opposite thigh. And then once you have it in this spot, they're going to see if you could get your foot to touch the ground. If you can get your foot to touch the ground, that's awesome. If not, that's totally okay. Then you're going to kind of hook with your elbow, almost like you're heel hooking your kneecap a little bit. But you're going to hook this and you're going to do some contract relax drills in this position here. So we'll take it in a big deep breath th together. Hold, keep everything tight. Exhale for 10 seconds. Try to get a little bit bigger of a stretch. You can bring your chest up, pull your knee across a little bit more. And kind of rock back and forth, find some areas that are tight. If you start to loosen up a little bit and want to pull your foot a little bit farther, farther back, that works too. You can even walk with your toes. Let's get three more contract relax cycles here on this side. want to breathe in and hold your breath for about five seconds and then exhale and breathe in and out nice and slow for about 10 to 20 seconds after that so let's get two more here And the last one. All right, that's it on that side. We'll slowly come out of this stretch. Shake our legs out a little bit. Gosh, that was a good one. All right, last one for the day. Let's we'll start back, seated position, sitting on our butt. I'll actually move so you guys can see a little bit better. Sitting on our butt, we're gonna, the leg we just stretched, we're gonna tuck that leg in as far as we can. Then the next leg, bring up and over. You may need to assist yourself. This side is so tight for me, so I need a little extra, extra assistance. But we're gonna pull it across ah, to the opposite thigh, and we're gonna get it so that we can plant our foot on the ground on the other side of our thigh. And from right there, we'll kind of almost heel hook our kneecap there. And we're gonna run through five contract relax cycles in this position right here. This side is super tight.
in the middle of this one. If you need to walk your foot back a little bit more, you can totally do so. I believe we got two more this side, I think. And last one here, then we'll call it a day. And we'll slowly come out of this. And that's that. Nice work, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you guys following along with these mobility routines. If you guys are interested in more mobility stuff, more mobility exercises and things that are gonna help you win more matches and get injured less, stay tuned because I'm creating a mobility course specifically for grappling athletes that's gonna launch sometime in the near future, hopefully in the next three to six months. I've been working really hard on it and I'm so happy to, to share it with you guys when that time comes. I can't say much more about it because it's kind of under wraps right now, but I'm so fired up to share that with you guys. If you guys are interested in getting stronger, getting more explosive, winning more matches and getting injured less, all you got to do is just click the link below in the description. You can sign up for the newsletter and you can get a free four week full body strength program. Uh, there's no strings attached and it, I'm not asking for a huge time commitment. I know you guys are busy, you guys are at wrestling all the time, competing all the time, doing tons of jujitsu. I get it, it's tough to you know lift four days a week for two and a half hours a pop. That's why I created this specific strength program that's only two days a week, 60 minutes a day, and that's it. It's four weeks long, so if you guys are interested, all you gotta do Click the link below in the description, sign up for the newsletter. You guys can get that free strength program. My name is Josh Selledge. I am the BJJ Strength Coach, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.